Now that we've understood how to configure BitLocker using the graphical user interface and also how to use PowerShell, probably one of the best ways to go about doing BitLocker is in fact here using group policy. And I've brought up a sample group policy object here called Enable BitLocker Encryption. And we're looking here at administrative templates, Windows components, and BitLocker drive encryption. So this is the group policy version of the local policy setting or the area that we were dealing with before. There are, as you can see, a lot of different settings here, and some of them can be kindly confusing, in part because some of the settings relate to older versions of the operating system, like Windows Server 2008 and Windows Vista. In some of these cases, some of the settings have been moved from this, the main folder location, into these three different subfolders that break apart the kinds of drives to be encrypted by how they interact with the operating system. So you have one folder here for operating system drives. You have another folder here for fixed disk drives, those that are plugged directly into a machine. This is different from removable data drives, which are your classic USB thumb drives or USB hard drives. Now, there are a lot of settings here, but there are a couple that are particularly important for you to at least be aware of should you decide to configure these here in group policy. Uh, just a couple here. I know I'm skipping over some of them, but some of the important ones, number one, are choosing what your encryption method and strength may be for actually encrypting the drive. So higher levels of encryption are more secure, perhaps may require more resources in order to do that encryption and decryption. So you have a selection there between the two AES variants. Down here, another one titled Provide the Unique Identifiers for Your Organization is one that can become necessary if you plan on using certificates as a data recovery agent for BitLocker. Now, we won't get into too much detail with the use of certificates for recovering BitLocker. There's kind of an almost easier way to do so by just injecting those keys into Active Directory where they can reside. But this is the location where you would enter in an identification field, an allowed BitLocker identification field, that corresponds with the certificate-based data recovery agent that you might use should you choose to go down the certificate route for your recovery agents. Up here then, under operating system drives, are another long set of those that you'll want to take a look at, particularly if you're going to be encrypting your OS drive, your, your C drive. Now, the first of which is one that we've already seen, this require additional authentication at startup. Now, to this point, we've only dealt with configuring it so that we can get away with not using the TPM chip. But if you do have a TPM, it's here where you can define the policy for what additional features are either allowed or even required in order to make use of that TPM chip. So for example, if you want not only to just allow a startup pin with a TPM, but to require it, you could do so here by setting the policy and then this setting down here at the bottom. Now, none of these work for us because we don't have TPM chips. We're just using the top item up here because it allows us to not have to use the TPM chip. But again, that's one of the locations where you can just further configure what kinds of additional protectors your users would use. I mentioned in the introduction to this course that those protectors and having to punch in those passwords can sometimes be a little challenging or perhaps a little ingratiating for users who just simply want to reboot or power on their machine. Well, I also talked about Microsoft's network unlock feature, which right here, there is a setting to allow the use of this network unlock feature to automatically unlock and decrypt a drive anytime the machine is connected directly into the local area network. Now, if you have access there into your LAN, if you have all the setup that you need to have that we'll talk about in a minute for using Network Unlock, if you have the proper certificate, which we'll also talk about down here, put into the appropriate location there in public key policies, well, this will allow you to eliminate the requirement for punching in that password at every startup. And arguably, this is a really good setting to have inside any LAN, because as you can imagine, if you have any kind of software delivery system or patch update system that requires a reboot to occur, if you don't have network unlock, well, anytime you deploy a piece of software or an update and force a reboot through those automated solutions, you're not going to end up with any kind of results or completion of that task until the person arrives the next morning and unlocks their machine. So again, kind of be careful with these because you're probably going to want to have some kind of network unlock so that you can support all these background solutions for the delivery of software and updates. We have some further configurations for disallowing standard users for changing their PIN uh, down here for an allowing enhanced PINs for configuring what the minimum PIN length should be for starting up a machine. You can control which cipher suite uh, would be used here, which crypto algorithm is being used by BitLocker down here with this setting. You can choose to enforce drive encryption on operating system drives. So if you want to ensure that every operating system drive is encrypted, you could enforce that encryption by enabling and then configuring this group policy setting. 
Back down here under Configure Use of Passwords for Operating System Drives is a location where you can configure just the password complexity options and the minimum password length if you choose to use that password protector. Here under the setting titled Choose How BitLocker Protected Operating System Drives Can Be Recovered is a, is a setting we'll actually take a look at here in just a minute that uh, will allow us to determine how we actually want our recovery keys to get configured on systems and then delivered either to Active Directory or through using certificates. And then lastly are some further configurations down here for your TPM chips and whether you want to use your enhanced BCD validation profiles. The list of things over here in fixed and removable data drives is quite a bit smaller, with the main difference down here being for removable data drives, the ability to just simply control the use of BitLocker on those removable drives. So if you have USB keys, if you have thumb drives, if you have uh, USB hard drives that people tend to plug into your environment, this switch right here, or this setting, would allow you to ensure that users have the ability to configure BitLocker protection on those removable drives. Now, everything else over here is the same between removable and fixed disks. Do you want to use smart cards? Do you want to deny write access to those drives that are not protected by BitLocker? Another handy tool if you want to protect yourself against an errant USB hard drive getting plugged into your network for one reason or another. Here again, we have the enforcement of our drive encryption type. Here we allow access to BitLocker protected removable data. We can configure the use of passwords and also how those removable drives can be recovered, just the same setting that we saw a second ago. So as you can see here, there are quite a lot of different settings that can be used to configure and also enforce BitLocker on the different types of drives that you have. Depending on what your, your, your security needs are, you may find yourself just simply wanting to encrypt everything to protect yourself against the loss of any piece of equipment.